Anyways. Oh, uh, well, should we get to some some fun news? I, I feel like we're going to be talking about some batteries for quite a bit. Let's so hear s- about some flappies instead. Let's talk about some wings. Flappies. Yeah, we they're <laughs> happening, guys. Uh, for the first time in a year, we finally are seeing a Starship prototype vehicle with Ooh. flaps, flippity flappity. Aileron, uh, aileron slash elevator slash air brake <laughs> slash elonerons. Yes. Ah, there you go. There we mm. go. Uh, yeah, these are these are the first operational, and by operational, you'll notice this. We actually have uh, s- some pictures from Nomad from from NASA Spaceflight shows you can actually see them retracted here. Oh. So they are moving. They hmm. are capable of motion. Is, is, it, is that like the mirrors on the on the Model Three that like flap in when you <laughs> it, pull into your garage? It is actually. I mean, it's probably around the same degree of motion, honestly. Yeah, I think they just use those motors. Actually, <laughs> <It's exactly. laughs> that was a very strong. so so like you could you could probably use the mirrors in your car to affect the aerodynamics. Yeah, when you're turning. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> just, just in case, just in case you go off a cliff, you can use that to guide your car down to the ground. <laughs> use them as, yeah, as air and brakes, do a belly flop maneuver, gritty fins. I have wondered how cool it would be if you could just tuck your mirrors in. Anyway, um, but the exciting thing about this is obviously this is this is good news for the upcoming serial number eight test, which is hopefully going to be the next thing out on the pad. Um, assuming that seven point one win. Okay, so we saw. Uh, I mean, I guess I can just pop over to that real quick, but um, yes. <laughs> but um, St- Starship 7.1 burst. This was just a. This is what they are intending to do: is just pressure pressurizing it until failure using uh, liquid nitrogen, and that's why it's super frosty. You can see in the video here, and if you aren't <laughs> seeing, but um, yeah, they 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 keep doing this as they make changes. This was a, a oh. different. Yep. Mm-hmm. Bye bye. Not Snow too good for everyone. The last one blew up from the bottom and actually lifted up off the pad. This one bursted from the top and just one kind of, of spilled the, yeah, over. Yeah, one of the last ones. But there was another one that just poked a little leak. One, I think when serial number seven just last time it, it popped, it just had a little a sprung a small leak. But yeah. um yeah, that's why so, is this that one was, so short? Um why is what so short? Oh, it's just a it's a test tank. It's not yep. the full it's not the full stack. Yep. Got so it. they're just okay. testing welds, they're testing out the material. So they yeah. So the, this was this was sorry. You know, go ahead. Sure, this is clear. this is a three hundred four stainless steel. This is like a new alloy of stainless steel that they were testing out. So they were like making sure that it held the pressure better or, or as well as the last one. Yep, and I think specifically three hundred four L. So okay. um, that was the that's the and so it's still not their their totally in house uh, three o you know three o X or whatever you know the the specific alloy that's that SpaceX is still working on and. And I think probably more more likely that the challenge is not making it a little bit, but making it you know ramping it up to production scale um, alloys. But this was this is a new alloy, the same alloy they're using on serial number eight. So assuming this went okay, we still as of the recording we don't actually have the numbers on how it did. But assuming it went okay, um, serial number eight, you know, because it uses the same manufacturing methods and materials. Then you know we're, hopefully we'll see this roll out to the pad here really soon or as we speak. I, I think almost. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see serial number eight at the pad doing a, a full scale pressure test. Assuming that goes well, uh, we're getting ready to see them put Raptors on it and we'll see them put the nose cone on it and we'll see them prepare for that, that big hop. You know, I, I almost hesitate to say hop anymore when you're going 15 or 20 kilometers up, you know, that's, that's a little bit beyond a hop. That's, Are they going to go yeah. out over the water and come back or is it just straight up? I mean, I think pretty much straight up. I think they're going to land right there next to their whole if launch like, pad. If it goes it, straight up and let's say they, you know, not that this would happen, but let's say they're just the engines die. They just whatever. Mm-hmm. I imagine wind could push it far enough onto say a house. No. No, okay. That's what no. I'm wondering. Like is it is it going to be like the, you know, Worst case scenario, it won't land on anyone or anything. So as we talked about last week in last week's show, we talked a little bit about flight termination systems and how Mm -hmm. you can either have a big go boomy button that just literally rips the tanks apart on purpose or you can terminate. Yeah, exactly. Or you can terminate (laughs) the engines. So um, I'm pretty sure these vehicles still don't have a proper deck cord. I don't think they have a, 
a way to totally detonate. I'm guessing they're just using engine termination. But what happens is, you know, they can calculate even based on the aerodynamic models at what point, you know, this is what I'm actually, honestly, I I feel like this has to have it because if you're going 20 kilometers up, forget the engines cutting out on the, on ascent. If you're 20 kilometers up and you have a big aerodynamic thing that has a pretty good cross range, save the flaps get stuck and all of a sudden just starts sliding way off course, you know, or something. It could go, it could glide a long ways. So that, I would imagine. That's my point. Like 20 kilometers up, you yeah. could, like that's a huge, I mean, I, I haven't been there, but I understand there's like some houses nearby, right? So well, like the houses, 30 houses or something. South Padre Island, five miles north, you know, eight kilometers yeah, north. Like, like that doesn't seem very far away if it just completely shut off and then flew somewhere, right? <laughs> like all of a sudden the wind decides to take it north. Oops. I don't think it's I don't think it's the wind. I think it's its own glide oh, yeah, ratio right. that would be the thing that that I'm concerned about. And so that might uh, I'll try to find out if it actually does have you know a way to I, I would assume because of that potential that they have an eye on it. But but don't forget in general a vehicle falling you know you can calculate based on its surface area you know it's all of the things you can calculate how far it can do what in any orientation. Now because this has the but because it has the flippy flappity things. That can change a lot, and I wonder how much they have to actually, you know, take all of that into account. They just have they just have a, a you know ground to air missiles ready at on on the base <laughs> station. Just like just we'll just shoot that out. thing down. Yeah, take it out of the sky. It, it, it is Texas, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, like... no, let's just shoot it. <laughs> uh, but I I am quite it's, concerned. It's doomed. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm quite concerned more about them just landing on their own, you know, pad infrastructure and the tank farm there and all of that expensive stuff that's literally right next to the landing pad. Well, and do you know on this first one, are they just going to like land it straight down like they normally would with a Falcon 9? Are they going to go for that belly flop thing? They're going for the belly flop. So they're going to they're going to land this for the <laughs> in, in a brand new way that they've never done it before right there next to the test tank and, and mm. all the. As far as we know, unless they last minute, who knows, they might. If I were making these decisions, I know it might be a huge nightmare to, to have to, in, you know, say it does land. How do you get it off of the drone ship and back to the, you know, back to Boca Chica? But like, I would still prefer it to oh, land on a no. drone ship, you know, even five miles east, you know, just go out into the ocean a little bit or into the Gulf, just a, just a little just enough that you don't risk your millions of dollars of infrastructure, not only the money, but the the time that would, how much that would delay progress if this thing would happen to go boom on the tanks, you know? Well, so I, I imagine they have to have a lot of confidence in this, in this idea. I mean, through computer simulations or, I mean, I don't know how, <laughs> I, I don't know how any of this works. So I, I don't know how, right. like, if, if there's like AI behind it that they've, you know, how smart the technology is or if there's something that like i said computer simulations over and over again it's like oh well, it was angle the gimbal and the burr, 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 you know well i think the aerodynamic profile i think they have obviously well well enough understood to try it like they understand yeah. how to control this they they have a lot of confidence that their system of control will work precisely to be able to do what they're trying to do but that they can't simulate like what happens if a connector you know like the electron where the connector just fried and all of a sudden you know something shakes yeah. loose and all of a sudden yeah. you lose control of this thing or this gets stuck in another way and blah 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 like you can't yeah i mean those risk are the is things high. <laughs> yeah i mean well, i can't wait to see it i no i'm one way or another it's going to be no matter be what it's going to be the craziest thing to ever see will be this giant thing don't forget this thing is as tall as a Falcon 9 booster, which is huge, 15 stories tall. But it's, you know, it's also three or three times wider, basically. And huge, shiny, mega, I mean, it is going to be absolutely yeah. wild to see. So when do we have an idea to attempt this? Well, Elon said October 15th in a recent tweet, but there's no way. That was Elon time. Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, it is actually looking, you know, if they roll this thing out to the pad, I mean, I'm not going to say no way October 15th, actually, because who knows? By the, is that too soon or too long from now? That would be too soon. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I just can't imagine. But who knows? They, they'll take it out to the pad. They'll have to do the test, you know, the, the pressure test of it. That will probably, you know, from from today, if that all goes well. You know, we saw how long it took them just to do the 7.1 burst test. It took about a week. 
Um, so this yeah. might take, you know, another week to certify this, bring it back into the pad, install three <laughs> Raptors, not just one, you know, um, mm-hmm. install the nose cone yeah. and all of those, get all those checks out. I expect that to be another week before they try to static fire. Assuming the static fire goes well, which might take a little bit longer because it's now three Raptors as opposed to one, all these new things. You know, I, I just see it getting into late October, you know, would be my guess. Yeah. I just feel like that's just how this stuff works. Everything takes twice as long as, as anyone wants. <laughs> well, I was yeah. I was asking because, you know, Elon time is kind of flip flop now where things are getting done quicker than he states, like the Model Y and some of those things. It was like, wait a minute. There's been some things like that. that have so we been, have to kind of recenter what that means. <laughs> I think it depends on, on things that are on things that they've done before, like producing a Model Y when they've already produced a Model 3, you know, and they know how to make a car now. Like, you know, that's the type of thing where, okay, I, I believe that you know how to do that now. But when you're when you're dealing with something that you've never done before. No one knows. Yeah. That's why when people yeah. ask me, like, hey, why don't you make a video on um, on when they might, you know, be able to go to orbit? Like, I don't know. That changes every <laughs> four minutes and, like, massively changes from, like, this could be in a month to, like, this could be in three years. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash yt. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.